Oh hi there. Today I want to try making a Guild Wars 2 diorama of Jomak, the Ice Dragon. Eh, old ice is still ice. Anyway, I want to make this scene, but I want to make Jomak to look like she's crawling out of a cave. So let's start with the mountain. To make the cave, I'll be using XPS foam. But as you can clearly see, this isn't XPS foam. That's because I'm still new to crafting and cutting out foam into desired shapes is still something my brain struggles with. So instead, I'll start off by making a basic structure first and work on the rock textures in small chunks. This allows me to make mistakes and I can make corrections or adjustments without having to start the whole thing over. To give the foam some rocky texture, many of you suggested that I use an actual rock. But I live in the city and, interestingly, it's easier to find an Italian restaurant than an actual rock. So I had to make do with some aluminium foil. Either way, I think it looks good enough. With the cave formed, I'll start working on the ground. And here's the thing, John Mac is a, well, is a very old ice dragon and I want to recreate the icy mist surrounding her. For that, I'm thinking of using a similar mist device that I used in the Studio Ghibli's Spirited Away diorama. And to allow the mist to roll over properly on the ground, I'll try to keep the terrain relatively flat. And just like that, the terrain is completed, sort of. So let's start painting. For the colors on the mountain, I want to make it look something like this. It's a limestone cliff in a place called Eagle Hawk Neck, where you also have the Blowhole or the Devil's Kitchen. Well, there's also a Pirate Bay, you know, because why not? Anyway, the color seems to be a rather simple patch of grey, so that's what I'll start with. To make it look less like a plastic rock surface, I'll also use a bit of brown colors to bring out a dirt effect onto the rock surface. Well, at least that's what I think. You can compare the two sides and let me know how you feel about it. To paint dirt, I thought of capturing a little bit of the Guild Wars 2 art style, the almost watercolor type of effect. I'll simply take some diluted shades of brown, grey and other colours and then simply splotch it all over the ground. This would hide my incompetent painting skills and make them appear intentional, almost artistic. With the painting job completed, I wanted to add some mossy texture here, but instead of green I'll be using brown foam texture. That's because I'm trying to imitate an autumn or fall type of weather. And the reason is that the inspiration for this diorama came from one of the suggestions from Bunny Ponja about an autumn diorama. Thanks a lot for your suggestion, although I've added my own interpretation to it, but I hope you like it. The autumn or fall season remains essentially the same, but let's talk about the story later. For now, let's make Jormak the Ice Dragon. To create Jomak, I'll be sculpting her out of polymer clay, specifically the Super Sculpey Living Doll Clay. Now, there are a lot of dragons in Guild Wars 2, but I chose Jomak specifically because I wanted to try something icy and cold. I believe that I've learned a fair bit on sculpting or creating terrain, so I thought I'd try and challenge myself in making a snowy and less green terrain. Now the interesting thing about Jomak is that she's made of ice chunks, so sculpting her will be not so difficult, well at least for me, because I struggle more in sculpting smooth curves. Once I've made a rough shape of her upper jaw, let's make some teeth. To make the teeth or fangs, I'll be using a bit of polymer clay and then spread it onto a piece of cardboard. Now I could just roll them into fangs, but I think John Mac's teeth look more like a shark's tooth, flat rather than cylindrical. 
So I'm hoping that this smeared piece of polymer clay would be the right shape. Now here's an interesting side note. The color of the Super Sculpey Living Doll clay is rather convincing. That sticking these tooth on made me feel very... Uh, odd. Right then, John Mac also has a lot of larger fangs or tusks perhaps, but as far as texture goes, it looks just about the same, and I'll just have to make it look like some icy chunks. Well, except for the fact that now it looks more like a shrimp out of water. But anyway, we'll get to it. Now while I sculpt Jormac, let me tell you the story and the reason behind why I chose the limestone rocky mountain. See, I've played Guild Wars 2 when it released around 2011, I believe, and at that time I couldn't afford to buy the actual game and had to play the free version. Now some of you may have played the free version, but if you haven't, here's what happens. Being a free player, the only way I could make some gold in the game was to sell crafting material. I couldn't sell drops or loots, so I spent a good portion of my life grinding for cotton or racks in a cave of pirates. This went on for quite a while until I discovered that there are world events in the centaur area where you could farm a lot of leather. So that's what I did and spent even more part of my life gathering and grinding for leather to sell to rich people. And that is where this terrain comes from, because that is embedded in my brain. Anyway, that is my story from Guild Wars. If you have yours, you can share about that to me. Finally, Jormac the Ice Dragon is completed along with two of her hands. The rest of her body would be hidden under the cave through the mist, so this should be good enough. To make Jormac look like an icy creature, I'll be starting off with a white base coat. But Jormac isn't just ice, she sort of glows. And to create this glowing effect, I'll be using this fluorescent paint. This fluorescent paint essentially glows when shone with UV light and I think it gives it a nice glowing effect. And while this looks good and all, I didn't really like the blue color. It didn't look very icy enough, so I decided to go with a white color instead. This came with its own drawback, which was that it's very difficult to see what I'm painting, but eventually I think it looks much better than the blue version. With the glowy bits completed, I'll give it a blue wash of icy color. This would hopefully give a bit of depth to the icy creature and also blend the glowy bits a bit. Now Jormac's horns and fangs are a bit dark. I suppose it's because the ice is hard and dirty, so to create this effect I'll brush it with a dark grey color to make it look like some, I suppose, cold, dirty ice crystals. Once I'm done with that, I'll apply a white highlight on the grey areas to make it look less dirty. Well, that's what I'm thinking in my head, but you can let me know how you feel about it comparing to two horns. And to make Jormac feel more like an icy creature, I want to add some iciness to it, almost like Jormac is freezing the ground underneath her. So I'll give the rocks around it a bit of icy color to make it look like an AoE effect. Now in Bunny Bonja's suggestion, the dragon was supposed to guard a treasure of sorts. And in my opinion, technically speaking, the most precious treasure for a human on earth is food. So I'll create some patch of grassy texture right around where Jormac is staring. And from here on, the story can be two things. One could be that Jormac is a destructive force and she has drained life everywhere except this last remaining patch. Alternatively, the other story could be that Jormac is actually a protector and she's here protecting the last remnant of vegetation. Well, that's a story for you to decide. Now to sell the effect of icy texture, I'll be making some ice shards using UV resin. I'll create some strands and then sharpen up the tips using some sanding paper. Once I've cut some sufficient tips, I'll simply glue it onto the rocky texture. Now 
once all the shards are in place, I'll give it a brush of UV resin to take away some of the cloudiness. And at this point I realized that hot glue actually glows in UV right, which was rather interesting and I think it adds a layer of depth to this diorama. Now to make the ice or frosty effect, I don't have any other snow effect material so I'll be using this white sand that I got from an aquarium store. I'll mix it with a bit of PVA glue and then simply stick it onto appropriate places. I believe that this sandy texture makes it look more like icy crystal rather than snow, but the downside to this is that sand is a bit heavy and it struggles to stick onto the wall. Either way, there's nothing a bit of patience cannot solve, so there you go. All that's left to do is to simply stick Jawmac onto the diorama. Once Jawmac is in place, I'll use some polyfiber mesh to hide her missing invisible body. This will also serve as a barrier of sorts to slow down the mist, making it more of a flow rather than a gush, if that makes sense. Now one of the good things about Guild Wars 2 was that the PvP in Guild Wars 2 was a bit fair, and I played quite a fair bit of it. And with PvP comes frustration and trauma, specifically the death flag. To create the actual flag, I'll be using some masking tape and then simply cut it into the shape that I want. After that, I'll give it the signature red and blue team colors. But a death flag wouldn't be a death flag if it didn't have an owner's name. So I will scribble some names onto the death flag. These will be the names of my Patreon and YouTube members. And a huge welcome to Danny and Fluffer for joining and supporting me directly. Thank you all so much for laying your lives for the sake of this diorama. The battle was fierce, the heroes... Okay, never mind. Back to the diorama. Let's make some mist. For that, I bought the same ultrasonic mist atomizer that I used in the boiler room diorama. And I also have these seeds. But what I need is the can to act as the reservoir for the water. I'll cut out a tiny little hole on one side of the container to make room for the atomizer to stick into. After that, I'll simply glue it onto the side, but at a slight angle so that it can absorb water, but not allow the water to leak out. And there you go, a lovely mist generator. Next, I want to create a shroud on the back. This is because the mist generator that I have is a tiny little one, and I want to trap and capture every little mist that it creates. Once that's done, I'll be using a magnet and a steel plate on the container to stick it on place. This way, the position of the mist generator is not fully permanent, allowing me to change the position of the mist generator if I so desire. The diorama is completed and let's see what we can improve on. The first thing I want to improve on is Jomac herself. I'm really satisfied with the fluorescent icy glowing effect. Perhaps next time around I can do something more than just paint. The second thing is that the rock and terrain painting needs a lot of work. I think I've learned quite a bit with this one and I'll try to use that on my next future diorama. Anyway, if you have any games or suggestions on scenes that you would like me to craft, please let me know down below. 
But for now, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Happy New Year and cheers. Thank mm -hmm. you.